This is Shadowhunt, a half-elf cleric in Baldur's Gate Frame, and confirmed by many sources to be the best girl and Gon's favourite princess. And this is Elden Ring, a pretty difficult game for casuals like me, especially with a build that focuses on roleplaying. But hey, this is how I would think Shadowkin would take on the quest to repair the Elden Ring. So join me and Shadowhunt as we cross the lands between on a quest to become the Elden Lord without any issues at all. For Shadowheart's starting class, I chose the Confessor for the High Faith Stand and the Aesthetic. It also starts with the Finger Seal, allowing us to cast incantations. I'll be linking the preset for Shadowkeep down below and shared it to Dyson Norite for your 10 hours of work. It's really cute. The only change I actually did make was to make her eyes green. We're going to pick Golden Seed here for our keep saying as this increases our Flask Charge by one. And with that being done, we can finally get started. First thing we got to do is remove this ugly helmet so we can admire how cute Elgon's favorite princess is. We're gonna jump off this cliff because this fight is way too easy. And besides, there's way more important things to do, like taking off your pants and going bare feet. Opening the door, we are faced with a scary prospect going outside. But sweetie, don't worry, it's not all that bad. You are maidenless. Hey, yo, fuck off. No, I'm none. On our quiz, to prove that we aren't maidenless, Shadowcute found a first side of grace at a nearby church and continued onwards, stumbling upon another side of grace where she decided to rest a weary feet. This is where we met Malina, who decided to be our maiden, and she was wasn't mucking around. We went straight to the hand holding. Malina gave us the power to summon a horse. This horse is named Torrent and will be our primary method of travel across the lands between. Speaking of travel, we quick traveled back to the church where we met a witch named Rani. I am the witch Rena. Um, <laughs> sorry Rena, who was positioned at the perfect height for a conversation. She gave us a spirit calling bell, which summons angry gatekeeping nerds on the internet. Next, we took a trip to the bench, exfoliated our feet, and found a golden pickled power font. This item boosts our runes acquired by 30%, which we're going to use very shortly. But for now, we're going to travel south into the Weeping Peninsula, where we picked up a Morning Star. This weapon is important because it has innate blade, which procs for a percentage of the enemy's health. And now for the exciting part of the video, we're gonna kill this AP Mama Dragon. This dragon has a lot of health, but since Blade does a percentage of it, we can kill a high level enemy at the start of the game. When the dragon is about to die, we're going to pop the gold chicken fur, giving us a lot of extra runes. We gained 25 levels with this bad dragon. Hey yo, um. Right next to the dragon is Fort Farah, and it kind of reminds me of Kazador's palace in BG Frame, because there do be a lot of rants and bants. The reason we're here is for Radagon Sorcion. It grants a plus five to vigor, endurance, strength, and dexterity. A massive early game boon at the cost of taking more damage. Okay, skipping all the way to Lyenia, we're going to grant God's favorite princess her weapon. Honestly, I thought the tree spear was a very fitting weapon, as it deals holy damage and scales with faith. It was also the closest spear that I could find that looked like the Spear of Night. But let's go give the spear a whelm against the game's first great boss. I'm figuring out the buttons, okay? Okay, I give up. Instead of beating our heads against the wall, Shadowcute yearned for the mines, collecting many smithing stones, which was used to upgrade a tree spear. Shadow Sweetie gave it another go. Oh, Yeah, f you, bestie. Following our first grain boss kiln, we started the most important side quest of our adventure. And trust me, this was the inspiration for the video. To get where we wanted to go, Shadowcute had to survive the lakeside crystal cave, and she had great difficulty. She died to the Bloodhound Nine over and over again until she hit a massive guard counter. And 
frosted her spear, deep in sign. God, I wish that was me. Reaching the other side of the cave, we finally meet Lieutenant. I told the all hearing brute already that I possess no such medallion. Do you recognize the voice? Rings a bell. Why? Here's a fun fact for ya. Jennifer English was the voice actor of Shutterheart in Baldur's Gate 3 and also the voice actor for Latena. It felt very fitting that Shutterheart would take Latena along with her on her adventure. But in order to do so, we had to meet Albus the Elbenoring, who gave us one half of the Halic Tree's secret medallion. Returning back to Latena, she had one request from Shutterheart. There is something I must do, even if I must say farewell to my wolf, Loba. Will you show me the way to the land of Mikola's Halig tree? After saying goodbye to a wolf, Lobo, she joined us on our adventure. Latena is an amazing archer with incredible range. She turns enemies into pincushions. Her only weakness is she can't move. Feeling confident with our new companion, we took on Godric the Grafton. And this is how and when. Yep, I died a lot. And I was too stubborn to level Vigan because I will literally do the opposite of what someone tells me. After losing to Godring, Shadowheart needed to go on a walk. She met a dog, then a new incantation called Flame Grant Me Strength. This adds 20% extra physical damage and fire damage. She then met Raya, a girl of gamer posture, who needed help getting in Nicholas Bank. So we went on an epic quest. An epic quest to just bite off a man cooking prawns. Returning the necklace back to Raya, she gave us an invitation to Volcano Manor. She then requested we meet her at the Altar's Plateau. To actually get to the Altar's Plateau, we needed two pieces of the Dectus Medallion. Shadow got back on Torrent and started riding. Hey, she went to Fort Hyde, not to be confused with Fort Knight, in search of the Dectus Medallion. There was a pesky knight who wouldn't leave her alone. And it was kind of a scuffed fight. Oh my god, through the wall, really? It's okay, the best girl survived. This night was relentless. But unfortunately, no match for Shadow Feet. That was the clowniest fight, but I'll take it. Opening a chest, she found the left piece of the Dectus Medallion. The other half was in Fort Faroff, and all we had to do was run past Stinky Bands. After getting both pieces, we can join them together, taking us to the Altus Platoon. Riot did promise to meet us up here, but Shutterheart had a lot of difficulty trying to find her in this area. When she did finally find her, there was some pre-marital hand-holding, which teleported her to the Volcano Manor. Shadowkey decided to join the family here, and got given a key to explore the other parts of the manor. It may be a little bit dark in these areas, but half elves do have dark vision. After being hard-coded to miss her fine bone, she found the Erd Trecyon. Right now, she doesn't have the faith requirement to use it, but I have faith in Algoth clearing. The Volcano Manor was a bit tough for Shadhan, especially when she's level 35. <laughs> And I think this is enough of a distraction. Let's go try Godric again. Shadowheart teamed up with Latena, waiting patiently for an opening. She ran in with a spear and thrusted. Taking a hit, she rolled away, waiting for one final strike against Godric. I am the Lord. With Godric down, we restored his great rune. This great rune gives us plus five to all attributes, provided we remember to use a rune arc. Shadow Kid's next adventure took her to the Academy of Raya Lucaria. To actually get in, we needed a key, which was found next to an EP dragon. In this academy, Shadowheart had to face her biggest fan. Yes, that's right, a wolf. Unfortunately for the dog game, Shadowheart is very good at polishing her spear. Damn, that's me on the floor there from Shadow Vein. We stumbled into Renala here, the queen of the full moon. Shadow Q took a lot of damage and drank her last healing flask. Renala was shielded by her students, but that's okay. The final student learned her lesson and Shadowheart used flame grant me strength, empowering her spear. <laughs> To finishing her off, are you? She was ready for round two. Renala's second phase was gorgeous, but not as gorgeous as Shadhan staggering Renala and crossing deep in Zion. <laughs> Waiting for the final opportunity, Shadakut did a charged heavy attack with the tree spear and used its unique follow-up. Oh, little Rani. 
Holy shit, we did a first go. What the hell? Smashing Rani's mom gives us the ability to change our attribute and our appearance. Since I did beat a first go, I've rewarded myself, you know, just a little bit. After dealing for an hour, long, it was time to meet her daughter. Riding towards the north side of Leonia, we're hidden inside Caria Manor. It seems kind of ominous here, having these chairs around the pond. Loretta appeared out of the pond. Okay, Shadowhan had a simple strategy. We're gonna stab the horse in the back here. Okay, maybe it wasn't that simple. Okay, I just rolled into that one. Bestie, okay. After trying out many strategies, you know what actually works? The try jump attack one. With Loretta out of the way, we head to Rani's rise to meet, um, Rani, I guess. Shadakit entered her sermons. Hey, yo. Our first task for Rani was to meet the others in her sermons. This included a furry, creepy weirdo, and a guy who sells us somber smithing stones. After talking to Rani again, we embarked on doing her quest line, bringing us to Redmain Castle. We rode in carefully, dodging all the catapults. <laughs> Inside the castle, we stabbed some commoners. One of them donated a headband, which was very pretty. Kind of like the circlet she wears. Um, get this right. Turns out if you touch any side of Grey's on the Altus Plateau, you start the Radan Festival. And I totally didn't suffer for hours trying to fight this joy. It was time to take on Radan, a demigod driven mad by the Scarlet Dron. Shadikit rode Horan across the epic battlefield, summoning her spirit guardians for the battle. Her guardians fought valiantly while she commanded the battlefield, but like any good leader, we have to give a massive contribution. After Rudan's defeat, the cycle of the stars actually continued, of which one came crashing down in Limgrave. And guess what? Time to go down a strange hole. This strange hole leads to Nokron, the eternal city. Shadaki found herself a ghost glow want ball bearing which will upgrade latena by getting the ball bearing we're able to upgrade the level frame if you played bg frame in act 2 there's a shard troll called the self same trial where you fight a mirror image of yourself now this image shared your character's levels and equipment you probably have seen the trick to unequip everything so that's what shadow kitty did to make it more fair the real shadowhan only equipped her spear and occasionally punched the clone fought dirty with a rock but that's okay it gets boring after a while playing with yourself so he finished the job. <laughs> After enjoying the lovely view, Shutterheart found herself at the Knight's Sacred Ground. Using a swordstone cane, she lifted a barrier and found the Mimic Tear Summon in a chest. As a trickery domain clearing, Shutterheart gets access to Invoke Duplicity, a channel divinity action allowing her to summon a duplicate of herself. After Latena and Shadow Cutie fought through the Silver Tears, we find the Finger Slayer Blade, the item Rani wanted, and the Great Ghost Glowborn, the final upgrade for our summon. With the Finger Slayer Blade in hand, we return to Rani, who rewarded us with a Carrion Inverted Statue. Before continuing with Rani's quest, Shadow Cutie needed to get a little bit stronger. Returning back to the Altus Plateau, we meet Brother Corhan, who needs help finding Gold Mask, who was standing on the broken grape branch. After reacquainting the two, Shadokit had access to the Discus of Light incantation. I know it looks like Guiding Bolt, right? And it does holy damage, that's perfect. This is only half of the combo. The other half was locked behind defeating the Tree Sentinels. At first, she tried luring one at a time behind the game, but found her death saving throws. Over and over again. Being the wise clearing that she is, a different strategy was in order. So she teleported back to the Weeping Peninsula to find a beetle that had the poison mist in camp. Taking on the tree sentinels again, she waited until they're in the prime position. Shadow Sneaky snuck up on them and used poison mist. We're just going to cope here and save inflict wounds. Okay, this took a while. Anyways, I made a coffee, painted my nails, walked my imaginary dog, looked at Shadowheart Rule 34 for a little bit, finished. I meant the tree sentinels, by the way. Finally, Shadowheart got the Earth Tree Great Chill. Its weapon ability is Golden Retaliation. It deflects a holy projectile back at the enemy. Okay, here is where it gets fun. If we use our Discus of Lion, we can deflect our own projectile. If you get really good at it, you can time two of these and deflect both. 
I consider an Elden Ring's version of guarding Balm. With a new shield in hand, Shatterheart tried to take on the draconic traitor Null, who was blocking the entrance to the city. She tried, but she realized she needed to get stronger. Heading back to the Weeping Peninsula, she found the Faith Knot tier, which increases her faith when she drinks a fizzing, and defeated an Urtree avatar for the Lightning and Holy Crack tier, which increases the associated damage type. She then traveled to Mount Gilmere to find the Golden Vow in camp, which increases her damage by 15% and decreases her damage received by 10%, which is massive because um, fashion is more important than armor rating. With all these goodies, Shadow Cube went back to take on the Draconic Trace and all again with the Sentinel dead. Our favorite goth princess made it into Lyondell, the royal capital. The capital is really important for our Pepe because we found some amazing Drim. It looks so pretty. It actually reminds me of the elegant robe you can get in Bordergate Frame. Wake up, honey. It's time to take on Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. Shadowheart fell to saving throne. Again, again, and again. But Shadow Cutie is stubborn and pulled through like she always has. Okay, I just noticed our flask is only plus two. Shadowheart, being the religious gal that she is when prayed at every church, increasing her crimson tears to plus nine. It was time to take on Morgoth, who unlike Shadowheart, had very gross fame. Morgoth was fast and had a lot of chain attacks. But was no match for the power of girls being friends with other girls. Latena, Malina, and Shadowkin destroyed the demigon with the ugly of things. And there was nothing stopping us from entering the Erdrain. Okay, fawns. Yeah, I guess that's valid. Malina offered the rolled medallion, which is used to activate the Grand Lift or Rolled, which will take us to the mountain tops of the giants. Before we head for the men tops, Shadaki took some time to continue Rani's quest. Traveling to the Ainsel River, she found a miniature Rani doll and decided to talk to him. As you know, that's a normal thing to do. Rani spoke for the doll and gave us a task. Eliminate the baleful shadows which prowl these lands. Whilst in the area, Shadowheart spent some time collecting pretty ghost glowborn flowers, which Latena seems to adore. The flower collecting journey brought her to Noxdala, where she found the eighth flower growing in the water and got into trouble playing with balls. Ah! Oh my god. It was time for the Baleful Shadow, Rani's sworn enemy. Beautifully fought. My thanks. It was more of a challenge than I envisioned. Yes, it was a very big challenge, Rani. Speaking of challenges, the Lake Arant awaited. Shadowcute made it across the swamp and picked up the nine Glowhorn Flower, enabling her to completely upgrade Latena, which proved to be an invaluable aid for the upcoming battle. Black well, just hops into a coffin that casually. Hi, Shadow Cutie. A fog wall lay ahead, and she entered the arena, summoning Latena to aid her. Astel took a lot of damage from Shatterhunt's guiding bones and Latena sat at a distance, bombarding her foe with a volley of arrows. The gills took him down, which revealed a passageway. This passageway was unfortunately sealed, so we have to return to the Raya Lucario Academy to get the Dark Moon Ring in order to remove the barrier. Shatterhunt found herself at the Moonlight Altar, it was along before she encountered a dragon. Adula breathed magic fire and struck out before landing nearby. It seemed that encountering Rani newest guardian caused the old dragon to fail her intelligence saving throw, making the fight a lot easier on Gon's favorite printers. Shadowheart found Rani's lifeless body. She knelt down and proceeded to put a ring on Rani's finger, marrying the moon wedge. Rani returned to her place in the night sky with a parting message. And once all is done, we shall see each other once more. Choosing to follow Saluna instead of Shah, Shadowheart embraced the path of the moon, taking the first stamp with a more fitting hair color. With Nalina's request in mind, Shadow Kitty went to the Grand Lift around. Before we could reach the mountain top, a fire giant stood in the way. Carrying many times over Shadow Q, he proved to be quite the tough foe. She battled the creature for what seemed like an eternity. was a brutal fight with Shadowcute failing her saving throws over and over. 
She eventually broke its legs, and the giant was in range, engulfing the entire battlefield with fire. Shatterheart played it smart and kept her distance on horseback. Oh my god, save me, Lieutenant! The giant hurled a fireball at Missile Lieutenant, but her arrows proved to be fatal. With the fire giant out of the way, we rode all the way to the tomb to speak with Melina. Are you prepared to commit a cardinal sin? The girls held hands, and since it was uncensored, the world started to burn, including the earth tree itself. I'm so sorry. I guess this is goodbye, isn't it? Shadakit woke up in the crumbling Farum Azula, and as difficult as that was to say, it wasn't as difficult as the thing you're about to witness. I'm actually getting frustrated by the camera. Deciding that the camera boss was not worth the trouble, Shadowheart got up and kept going. And speaking of trouble, the Godskin Due. They proved very troublesome, as Latena was too squishy to take hits from them, and Shadowheart needed space to use her guarding bolt combo. Also, the run back to the boss room was a pain in the butt. She searched for a closer grace to save her faith a distance. Approaching the duo from this on, we were able to summon Banal for support. The fight went a lot better with Banal tanking the hands from all sides. However, it wasn't quite enough for a victory. What changed the tide of battle was the sleep punt. <laughs> Taking on the duo one at a time was a lot easier. <laughs> After the boss, Shadowhunt wanted to go on a side adventure. She found an ancient dragon prayer book, which she gave to the turtle poem, who helped her study the ancient dragon's a lightning strike incantation. Wanting to strengthen her incans even more, she found the faithful's canvas talisman, increasing her damage by 4%. She was eager to test out a new lightning strike, and a magma worm was the perfect target. Near the slain worm, she found Alexander, the great jar warrior, just having a casual bath in the lava. He told Shadokyu to meet him at the crumbling Osula, which we did, and he challenged us to a one-on-one -on -one fight. Take what I bequeath from inside me. Hey yo! The Shard of Alexander is a talisman that increases skill power by 15%, which will come in handy a little bit later. Feeling a little bit tired, Shadokyu had a short nap, waking up to face a two-headed dragon. Dragon Lord Blasted Sags. His name is hard to say, okay? He had a very big hitbox, meaning Shadowheart's ancient dragon lightning is gonna do a lot of damage. The Dragon Lord was on the run, but he couldn't outrun Latena's arrows. Latena's just the best, isn't she? Anyways, Malekith the Black Blade was next, and oh boy, his massive 80% holy resistance meant Shadokyu had to rely on using Catch Flame. This doggo was relentless with these attacks. Things weren't looking good as Shadokyu died again. And again. She even committed a cardinal sin, wearing boots. But even that wasn't enough to best Malika, feeling defeated. Shadokyu fell to her knees and prayed, calling upon her deity in a moment of need. A divine voice told her, Go towards a volcano manor, slay the wicked creature then, and I will reward you with a weapon that can even best the guns. A Shadowheart took on the god devouring serpent. Being careful not to burn a bear vein in the lava, she used the serpent hunter spear. With the vile snake falling, an even more sinister creature appeared. Rikan, the Lord of Blasphemy. Join myself and King as family. Together! Rikan struck Shadowhunt. But she retaliated with the thrust of her spear, staggering him and allowing her to deliver the final blow. After defeating that monster, Shadowheart received her divine gift, the Blasphemous Blade, a weapon capable of tearing down our greatest enemies, clearly the weapon promised by her goddess. She upgraded her reward to plus nine. To aid her further in her revenge against Malekith, she had to slay a putrid tray avatar, which gave her the flame shredding cracked tear, which boosts her fire damage by a massive 20%. She was ready to take on Malekith again, and Malekith was relentless.
Shadowkeep got very close to slaying the Black Blade. Are you being serious? Oh my god. Dodging his attacks, Shadowheart finally found her opening and the Blasphemous Blade burned for his health. With Malekith down, the Rune of Death was unbound, reducing Lyndell to ashes. Hi, sweetie. I haven't forgotten about Latena, so let's go do a quest together. She wanted to return to the land of Mikula's Halic train, and in order to do so, we needed the other half of the Sacred Medallion. Latena and Shadokin took on Commander Nile. Latena fell during the battle, but the damage was done to the commander, not letting her companion's effort be in vain. Shadowheart waited for the perfect moment. With the commander out of the lane, Shadokin found the other half of the secret medallion sitting on top of the horn. And with both pieces joined, she was able to reveal the hidden path to the Halic train. This led her to the consecrated snowfounds. The visibility was poor, making navigation difficult. However, she did manage to ride up north to the apostate Thuronlink. Oh my god, look at them dogs, they're massive. Latena gave her tearing sister a birthing droplet to give life and hope to all the Albanorics. She rewarded Shadowhunt with a somber ancient dragon smithing stone, which will fully upgrade one of our weapons. Now that nothing is left unfinished, I will join you in battle to the bitter end. And when the fighting is done, then you may lay me to rest. Beside Lobo, my dear wolf. Editor, everyone here. I really love Lieutenant's Quest. This is like one of the happier endings in the game run. And trust me, there's a lot of tragic endings. It's so nice to know that Lieutenant will be with us until the very end. And bringing one of Jennifer English's voiced characters along on the Shadowheart themed run seems so fitting, honestly. We're back to Shadowcute's adventure, where before continuing towards the Halic train, she met a hermit merchant. He sold her the Sentry's Torch, which allows her to see cloaked assassins. And speaking of assassins, she traveled to Ordina a seemingly innocent town that hides a sealed portal. To break the seal, Shadokid had to lock the four figures in the Evergel. The sky turned to night, and Ordina became eerily quiet. The assassin was unseen, and Shadokid tried to blindly light him on fire. Oh, that's right, we put the sentries haunt. We can now see the assassins, helping us avoid them. She lit her first statue, then the second, and then faced the second obstacle, magic machine gun archers, and there was a lot of them. She tried again, but the Albanorics had great proficiency with their bows. However, they had one weakness. With the lack of mobility, all Shadow Cutie needed to do was close the gun. The first statue was lit, and we managed to light the final one without too much trouble. The gate seal was broken and Shutterheart found herself in the land of Mikla's Halic Dream. Traversing the tree branches and getting closer to the tree itself, we ran into Loretta again, but this time it was in the flesh. She was blocking the entrance into the city, but no matter, as the girls took it down without too much trouble. Revealing the path to Alpha Elm, the brace of the Halic Dream. Very soon, Shadokin ran into the most difficult challenge of her adventure. <laughs> In all seriousness, I think you know who it is. I am Melania, Blade of Mikola. Sorry, what was the name again? I am Melania, Blade of Mikola. Sorry, what was that? I am Melania, Blade of Melania lived up to a title, and Shatterheart tried everything. She tried guiding bones, she tried fire incantations. But Melania's waterfowl dance destroyed God's favorite princess. She got onto her knees again and prayed, seeking guidance from the Moon Maiden. She had to become even more powerful to best such a skilled bow. Traveling to Fort Lane, she found the Fire Scorpion Charm, which increases fire damage by 12%, but increases physical damage taken by 10%. Returning to Alphaeon, she found the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, which decreases physical damage taken by 20%, greatly improving her survivability. And her deity granted her use of the Blasphemous Blade again. Melania did a waterfowl dance, but Shadoku managed to survive and strike her down. This is only just the beginning, as Shadoku learned of Melania's Scarlet Bloom. You will witness true horror. And true horror was witnessed as she died again and again.
Hey, sweetie, remember that mimic tan? You know, that we got in knock on. What's better than one shot again? That's right, two of them. To make it a little bit more fair, we're gonna remove our armor. <laughs> It turns out too, Shadok Yusin unaware wasn't enough for the job. So she put on her dress again and witnessed her mimic showing the same brain cell. Even though the girls bullied Melania, she destroyed them in her second phase again and again. Shatterheart was getting disparate and she really didn't want to resort to this. She decided to wear her armor. And you know what the funny thing was? She got it first attempt. I wish I was joking. Like, I really wish I was joking. Your strength. Extraordinary. Melania fell, but Shattercute succumbed to the Scarlet Rod. This reminded me of the Great Shattering and the battle between Melania and Rodan that ended up in a draw which seemed very poetic. With Melania's strong affirming words in mind, Shattercute returned to Lyondell, the now ashen capital, with the goal being to reach the Urtrine. The first enemy standing in our way was Sir Gideon Ofna, the all-knowing apparently. Okay, all he knows is how to spam spells and get ranked. After dying to his own bullshit, Sir Gideon gave way to Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. The tenor's arrows staggered him and set up Shadowhunt to use Taker's flames. I don't need to dodge a roll, I just need to press one button. It was time to enter the Urtrain, the finale of our journey. Latena and Shatterhune took on Radagon of the Golden Order. Latena fell during the battle, but Shatterhunt managed to strike through on Radagon. Emerging from Radagon's body was the final challenge, the true form of the Elden Ring, and Shatterhune got stunlocked on her first attempt. Needing a setup on the olden base, she called upon her mimic can. The mimic proved to be an excellent distraction. However, every time she got close, the beast flew across the arena. Shattercute had to be patient. She had to find the right moment to execute her strategy. With the beast focused on the mimic, Shatterheart was able to take the time to fully charge her ancient dragon lightning. Because the beast was so massive, each and every lightning shrine struck for incredible damage. With one final lightning strike, Shatterhand had slain a literal god. The battle is over, I see. Rani mended the ring and ascended as an Empyrean, bestowing upon the lands between the Age of the Stars. Under the influence of the moon, Shadokute took Rani's hand and became her eternal consort. And with that being said, it felt like a fitting end to her journey. Before I leave you all, I just wanted to express a heartfelt thank you to all my lovely patrons and YouTube sweeties. You all mean so much to me, and no words can express my gratitude for your ongoing support. Thank you so much. Anyways, don't subscribe, because I'm um, reverse psychology.